Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revis Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll see how we can recreate in Revit this ETFE roof system. It's used on the Eden project in the UK. It looks a bit complex, but once you know how to build this, it's very easy. So as you can see, I have here this full project in 3D. It's a glass house, that's why I place some trees inside. And if you turn off the edges, it will look very similar to the reference image. And of course, because this is Revit, you have all your drawings ready once you have the form. If I now go to a level view, that's the footprint of the whole project. And if I go to a section, the whole structure is there for me to see as well. That's one ETFE panel, repeated so many times. You can even see the difference in sizes between the domes. If I go to section 2 there, that's four of them. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now and get tutorials like this every single day. Okay, let's get started. To begin, let's create the curtain panel family. And for that, I can go to File, New, Family. Then choose this curtain panel pattern based template. When it's open, just go to Properties. Select this grid there and change this to be the hexagon system. That's one hexagon there. It doesn't look very regular because it's longer along this side. I want this side to be of relatively the same length. So let's select the grid again and set this value to be something bigger. That will do for now. So let's see what's actually required for the curtain panel family. I have here a close-up view of the system, and as you can see, we have already the first part of the system, which is the hexagon on top. However, what makes a system robust is this space frame structure underneath. It looks quite complex at first, but if you break it down, it only contains a few elements. Let me demonstrate if I go back to here, and just make a drafting view so we can sketch out what's required in the panel. We can now go and draw a hexagon now. something like that. That's the first panel you have there. We can then copy this to see the second panel. And then from each corner point, you will have four lines connecting that point to the underlying grid. And in plan view, it will look just like a regular triangle. Let's draw it in here. So the first triangle there, second triangle, That's what you have for each corner of a single hexagonal panel. Interestingly, that kind of creates a second hexagon underneath the first one. So let's create it again in this curtain panel family. To begin here, I will place six points. So go to here now. Make sure you are placing them on face. And then just drop in here one point for each line in the middle. For clarity, I will now hide this grid just for the moment. Next step, we need to place on top of each new point another point as well. So I will go back to here. This time I will place new points on reference planes. And now we can set the first work plane to be this horizontal plane along this first point. Press tab now until I see this highlighted and click to set the work plane. When that's set, we can now place a new point right on top of the previous one. This warning can appear saying something about identical points in the same place. That's fine, we're doing this on purpose, so just dismiss it. Now let's repeat it for the other five points. Now we can now select each of the new points and then move them down, like that. These points below will form the underlying grid, so we want to make sure they are equally offset from the top panels. Let's see what the offset value now. If I get this one here, it's about minus one meter and a half. I can now turn this into a new parameter just to control it later on in the project. 
let's call this one base offset and now we can select the other five points to just give them the same offset parameter this one here now as you can see some of them are not in the right location if I orbit the view now this one seems to be going in the opposite direction let's see when I select this it looks like for this one the offset has to be plus 1500 not to worry I will give it an additional parameter now and then when I go to family parameters I can now set this to be a negative value of the base offset because that's minus 1500 this is now plus 1500 now we need to also change this base offset just to get to the original formation and now they are on the same plane all right next step let's start to create the second hexagon we cannot connect them in pairs those new points so these two like that let's do the same five more times Now when I look at it from the top, we now have the upper hexagon and the lower hexagon as well. Next step is to create these diagonal cables or members. Super easy, I have to go just here and connect upper points to lower points again in pairs. So these two should be together and these two as well. Let's do it five more times. Here we go. Now it's time to create our ETFE membrane. We can now go back here, go to the top view. And I will select point 6 and the opposite, which is point 3. I can then connect them with another line. Turn this line now into reference line. We can now place another point there, right at the middle of this new line. Make sure to place it on face, not on work plane. Click it here. And that's done. We can now create the membranes of our ETFE panel. Let's go back to the point tool. This time place point on a work plane. And set this work plane to be the horizontal plane here. Place this new point right on top. Click OK. And this one here, let's move it down instead. And now place another point in the same manner. Select that as well and move it up this time. Now you can see the distance from this point to this other point below will be the overall thickness or depth of our ETFE panel. Let's give these two offset parameters. So this one here, I can now call this maybe minus 500. And we'll be naming this now top panel depth. The one just below, we can now give it the same value but in the plus side. And then call this lower panel depth. We can now create two arcs that shows the top of our panel. We can now get point 6, point 3, and the bottom point there in the middle. Create a new line now. Because we have three points selected, it will create an arc instead of a line. Turn this arc into reference arc now. And then you can select this line and this other line opposite as well. It's time to create form. Click this button. And as you can see, it doesn't look like something we need because here you have the panels going around and beyond the panel's boundary. Let's undo this. To prevent us from happening, we need to have another arc here. So let's get this point here, this point there, and again the point below. Make now a second arc and turn this into reference as well. Now to create this intermediate arc profile, I have to have in here one other point, so let's put it in there. 
So place point on face, one here, and because I'm here, we can also do another point on the opposite side. This point will always be at the middle between this point and the other point there. To make it happen, we need to change this normalized curve parameter to 0 0.75. Similarly, I want this point to be always at the middle of this point and this other point there. So this now has to be 0 0.25. We can now start creating additional profiles. So these three I can now select and create an arc. Similarly, over here, I can make another arc as well. So let's try this. I can now get these profiles, all five of them, or even six. We can now do great form. And as you can see, the shape is a bit funny. It's an improvement from before. But we don't want the panel to go beyond this limit anyway. Let's undo this. For that reason, we need to create the membrane in two halves. So this one here, these three I can now select and create form. That's the right half of the bottom membrane. I can now do the same here to create the left half. The downside of this approach is you will see a division line between the two halves. But for now, I think that's an acceptable compromise. Let's do the same for the top membrane. So I will get these three points. Here we go. Turn on shaded mode, and you see now that's a proper ETFE panel right there. Of course, you can change the dimension later on. So if I now want to make this meter bit raise up a bit more, I can change this parameter from minus 500 to minus 1000. And that's now thicker. We can do the same for the bottom half, but for now I quite like the previous dimension. So let me undo it now. Here we go. Let's save this panel before we move on. We can call this ETFE panel 3. All right, so the ETFE part is done. We have these translucent membranes now. Let's now go ahead and create the frame of the top panel. I can now get these lines and then isolate them in this view. We need to now create a profile for the frame here. And the best way to do it for me is to go and make it in a separate adaptive components family. So when you go to new family, just choose generic model adaptive. You can also do it straight in the other family, the host family, but I find it much easier to have it here separately and then bring it back in. So with this, we can start placing a new point here and make it an adaptive point. Next step, I can create a rectangle on a work plane and set that work plane to be this horizontal one around my point. Just draw it from the corner like so. Then I can move it so the point is now in the middle of the rectangle. We can now start creating dimensions to control this rectangle size. So one here, another one there. We can now call this one W1 for width one. This can now be W2. This one as well can be now H1. And the other one will be H2. It's a bit relative which side is width and which side is height. But if I can just get them to the right names, I can change them later on in the project. So now I can save this as Rect Profile. And now we can load this back into the project or the other family, ETFE panel tray. Now, because this is an adaptive component, I can now place it here and it's gonna host itself onto this line very nicely. We can now select it here, go to edit type and start changing the dimensions of this profile. So let's see what H1 is, if I put this as 50. So H1 will be the bottom half of the height well, H2 should be the top then. We can now put this as 50 and H1 reduce it to 20. 
for the width I can now do 50 on each side here we go it's entirely up to you I'm just using some small dimensions here to make the panel stand out more we can now go and select the other lines along with the profile and do great form here we go now thanks to our parameter you can always select the profile which is still there you go to edit type and change the dimension if you like I may go a bit more generous on the width we can now reset the view and our membranes now have their frame next step we can now create the cables on the underlying second frame if you look closely they use a route profile not rectangle that means I need to now create a second profile family still with the same template adaptive generic model and the same principle now we can place a point make it adaptive but this time instead of using a rectangle tool we can do a circle on the work plane which is here this one give it a radius and now we can turn that radius into another parameter just R for radius for now one meter and a half is a bit much let's do 20 now I can save this as route profile and bring this now into my panel family now to place this one we need to place them on the underlying lines or frame let's do one here and then one there before I go any further though I want to make sure those lines will be reference lines at the moment they are still black and that means if I create form from them they will be subsumed into the form I want them to stay actually so I will turn them now into reference lines make sure you don't get the profile otherwise the option won't show up now it does we can now tick this and now they are green I can now easily select the second hexagon along with the profile and do create form next step I can do the same here for the diagonal members so maybe just get them all like this along with the profile obviously and do create form here we go very quick and easy to finish off this panel family we can now give the geometry some materials let's go to here select the top frame there and call this one top frame this one below it actually shares the same material with the diagonal members so I can now get them as well like this and use another parameter just call this cable and don't forget our membranes we can now select them all there are four of them so you have to tap a few times I find it easier to hide the frame in this case here we go make sure you get them all four and now we can assign the same material parameter just call this membrane is good enough okay reset the view now and we can go to manage materials and then duplicate this material here call this ETFE I can now go to here and change the color to white and set the transparency ratio to maybe 50% under appearance make sure you have the same color white there and in here enable transparency and reflectivity this one can be 50% transparent as well and having said that I can now use that there as my membrane material just type in here the name is good enough here we go we can do the same now to set material for the frames and cables for the top frame there let's duplicate this disable reflectivity disable transparency I can use the same one there for the cable so default number one can be here as well amazing now before we forget let me show you one thing we have to do here I will hide those frames just for a moment we need to now select these two generic profiles and make them invisible by unticking this box 
Otherwise, when I use this panel in the project, these tiny objects will show up, and that's not very nice. All right, I'm going to save this family for the last time and test it now in the project. Let's go to New Project. We can now go to Massing and Site and do an in-place mass. You can, of course, do this in a separate mass family. I just find it more handy to do it here in place. Let's call this one Eden Project or any other name you fancy. And in here, let's start drawing the footprint of the project. If I go in here, I have a small floor plan of the project. You can see now, it's made up entirely from spheres. So you have here the first circle, second one on the side, same one there, and a smaller one below. This other half of the project is kind of similar, so I will only create today this first half. This one here below is your homework. Now, we can create the first circle to begin with. Let's go to here now. And draw a circle starting there, going 30 meters in radius. I can now go and draw the second circle from this quadrant point, give it a 20 meter radius. And over here, the same one with the same size, 20 meters. Go to 3D now. I can now get the first circle and make that into a sphere. Do the same one here for the smaller circle. And then one more time there. Back to the plan view. The idea is I want to have all the circles, all four of them looking into the same courtyard area below. That's the design intention here anyway. So when I select this first sphere there, I can see this is the center line of the sphere. It's looking right that way, perpendicularly. But if I get to this other circle, it's not doing the same thing. I need to now select it and do a rotate command using the center point of the sphere and going this way by maybe 15 degrees. Here we go. Let's use wireframe mode if that's easier. We're going to get the first sphere as well and do the same rotation but now in the opposite direction. Next step, I can now draw another circle here. Give it a radius of maybe 18 or 12 meters. And do the same one here, 12 meters again. Go to 3D. We can now turn those into spheres as well. Back to the plan view, I can now rotate them as well, just so they get looking at the same courtyard. This one will be 15 degrees this way. And then a second rotation, this time around the center point of the bigger spheres next to it by as well the 15 degrees angle similarly this one here i can also rotate this way 15 degrees and then rotate it again around this center point of the bigger spheres next to it by the same degree here we go we're gonna do the last circle there this time going for eight meters in radius and create form again and rotate it again as well. Now this last one, I don't need to rotate it one more time because this one here and this one there, they will be void geometry anyway. I can now turn them from solid to void. And you can see now the subtraction has happened. If I go to 3D, those are the four spheres I need to recreate this section of the project. We can now start joining them. Let's go to Modify, Join. And now it's just a matter of setting them now in pairs to get those nice join lines. Amazing. I can now click Finish Mass and save my project. All right. I think this is now time for our panel family to shine. Let's go back to the family now. And simply load it into Eden Project. Now I can get this mask, add it in place, and just select the top faces of each sphere. All four of them like this. I can now do divide surface and turn the pattern style to hexagon. For the size, let's give something more meaningful here. How about 2 meters this way and 1300 this way. 
I know these dimensions because I did some testing before the tutorial. But if you don't know the values beforehand, just have a play and eventually you get some good values here to use. We can now select them again and now turn them into using ETFE panel tree. Depending on how many panels you have to generate, this may take from a few seconds to a few minutes. And that's done. As you can see, we forgot something. Those tiny objects, they are the rectangular profile that we have in each family. Let's go back to the panel family now. I just forgot to turn it off and maybe you have. Let's go here, select it and untick this visible box. We can now load this back into the project. Okay, they are gone now and now we have a clean proper system. We can now go to finish mass. And to show the system in the best light, we can go again to massing and sight and this time turn off the visibility of masses. Here we go. I can even see the system from below. And that's the same structural grid we have in the reference image. Next step is to give this a bit more context. It's a glass house. You have trees and plants inside, as you can see there, just about. So let's put some nice trees in here. I can go to level zero now. And then load in here a custom tree family. This one here. The nice thing about this tree family is this. You can give it different dimensions along different directions. So if I select it here. If you want to learn how to make this tree family, check out our other video using the link in the description. For now, let's take a look at the previous project that we saw at the beginning. It's the same thing we just built, but I have put in here a few more trees to make it more like a glass house. Also, if you go back to our new project, where two spheres intersect, you don't have a nice transition between the panels, as you can see here. That's why in the real project, they have in here a separation object, a bit like a gutter. We can also do that, and that's what I've done in the other project. As you can see, there's a separation here between the spheres and this is where you can put in here a gutter to separate the two systems. Very easy to do if I now enable massing and then turn off the curtain panels category like this. You can see I just put in here between the spheres some simple sweep geometry and then use those geometry to cut away any part of the spheres that intersects with it. You can do the same now in the new project. Let's go back to here. Go to 3D again. Turn on massing. Select the mass now. And do edit in place. In here, we can take out our panels. Just select them and delete. We'll recreate them shortly after. So now I will need to start drawing some lines essentially an arc here to serve as the sweep path for my sweep. Let's go to create a model line and do spline through points. You can now snap to essentially all the points along this arc to recreate it as a separate object. Get the line now and just copy it down here away from the building, maybe by 60 meters away. And this one you can now delete. I can now start placing a point on this at any location we find and then draw a circle on the reference plane which is set to this one here. The radius can now be 500 mil. We can now get the curve and the profile and create form. This form now, I can move it back into the building. We moved it away by 60 meters. Now we can move it back again by 60 meters. Here we go. Now I can turn this into a void. And it will create for me the separation that I need between the two spheres. I can now select those two spheres again and device surface, reapply the panel and it will turn out just like this. Without the mask though, there'll be a void there and you will then 
have the chance to create in here the proper gutter or joint detail that you need. In this system, they have a truss here where that joint is, but the lesson is cut up long now, so I will leave this for the next tutorial. If you want to see this lesson as soon as it comes out, as well as other tutorials we publish every day, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, learn to make those trees in the other video in the description. Practice creating this roof system, and I'll see you in the next lesson.